this video, I'll give a brief introduction to conduction. We'll talk about boundary layers, we'll talk about the analogy between heat and momentum transport, and we'll talk about calculating convection coefficients. So convection is the heat transfer that occurs from a solid surface to a moving fluid. So we have a solid surface at a given temperature Ts, and T infinity is lower than Ts, we'll expect a heat transfer into that fluid. Right at the surface of our solid, the velocity of the fluid above it is zero, and as such we have conduction heat transfer into the fluid from the solid surface. As the thermal energy is conducted out into the flow, it is carried advectively by the moving fluid. That's going to result in different temperature profiles, and different flow patterns are going to result in different heat transfer rates. That is what convection is all about. If we think about fluid mechanics, we want to be able to calculate these convection coefficients, or the effect of the moving fluid over our solids of different temperatures, so that we can calculate those heat transfer rates. Now we could have analytic methods where we come up with a governing equation such as the Navier-Stokes equations uh, and we solve it in order to understand a flow situation or a flow with energy, with energy transport situation. Of the analytic methods, we could have either differential methods or integral methods. You've, you used integral methods in the early fluid mechanics courses and you might use them in later fluid mechanics courses as well. So the integral methods are when we do control volume analyses and we calculate, say, the forces on an object due to the changes momentum in and out of the control volume around our object. Differential analysis is when we shrink our, when we shrink our control volumes down to a point and we solve for the velocities, the temperatures, the pressures at each and every point. And so the top level equation for our fluid mechanics is the Navier-Stokes. We sometimes simplify those equations into the boundary layer equations, and we'll look at those a little bit later as well. If we neglect viscosity, we can have the Euler equation or the inviscid equations, and we we'll can look at potential flow as well, which you may do in your fluid mechanics. Alternative to those analytic techniques, we can have empirical techniques. Empirical techniques is where we build a model, and we conduct an experiment, and we take measurements. So we might uh, look at a heated sphere in a wind tunnel, change the velocity over the sphere, and measure the heat transfer from that sphere. And as we do that for different conditions, uh, we can correlate our experimental results into correlations that we can use. And so let's look at how, a little bit at how we understand the physics of the flow in these situations, and how we can end up digesting the information in a flow field and temperature field in order to get a convection coefficient uh, that we've been using so far in the course. So if you think about flow over a flat plate, think about boundary layer flow, we have a flow far away from any solid surface that is at a constant velocity of u infinity, and the temperature far away is everywhere t infinity. That flow is going to impinge upon this solid plate, and what's going to happen when it does that is because of the no-slip condition, the velocity will be zero on the surface of the plate, and it will increase to some distance away to be at that u infinity, the free stream velocity. As we move further down the plate, we find that it takes a longer distance to reach that u infinity, longer distance from the surface of the plate to reach that u infinity. And subsequently, further down, it's an even larger distance. Well, we can look at that point where the velocity is, say, 99% of the free stream velocity u infinity, and we can connect all of these velocity profiles at that point, and that defines the region of the boundary layer. That region of the flow where it's adjusting to the presence of the solid surface and the velocity is not u infinity. And that has a certain thickness, delta, which increases as we move from the leading edge of the plate downstream along the plate. Correspondingly, temperature t infinity is different than the surface temperature. We will have a temperature profile, which in this case ts is greater than t infinity, so the temperature will decrease as we move out and reach the t infinity value far away from the plate. And similarly, that will take a larger distance from the plate to reach t infinity as we move downstream, and a larger difference still as we move further downstream. Again, we can connect a line that joins the place where, say, we reach 99% of the free stream temperature, and define the thermal boundary layer, delta t being the thickness of that thermal boundary. And of course, the flow in this plate is on both sides, so we have the temperature profile on both sides and the velocity profile on both sides. It's easier to make the picture uh, showing one on each side. Now, if we think about the heat transfer, right at the surface of the plate, the velocity is zero, and so we know from Fourier's law that the heat flux at any location is minus the conductivity times the temperature gradient with respect to y, the normal distance to the plate, evaluated at the surface of that plate. So this temperature gradient here, which is changing as we move down this plate, uh, tells us the heat transfer right at this surface. Now, we've done problems like this. That 
heat, which is transferred from the plate to the fluid flow here, is of course carried away by these velocities. And the fact that this velocity profile looks like it does explains why this temperature profile looks like it does. Before we go back to the heat transfer, if you recall from your fluid mechanics that the shear stress related to the friction force on the surface of this plate is the viscosity of the fluid times the velocity gradient at the wall. Now that compares to Fourier's law, where the heat flux is equal to minus the conductivity times the temperature gradient. And this is suggesting, not surprisingly, that there is a large similarity between the transport of momentum, uh, which is resulting in this velocity profile, and the resulting uh, friction, or shear stress on this surface, and the heat flux that, ar that arises uh, because of the temperature gradients. Ultimately, these gradients are related in some way. So the equation looks very, very similar between these two, and it's not surprising that we can infer the heat transfer, or we can calculate the heat transfer, as a modification of the same relations uh, that give us the skin friction or the shear stress on our surfaces. The, the heat transfer is directly related to the fluid flow pattern that we have uh, arising in our particular geometry, in this case a flat plate. Now, going back to the heat transfer, we've established that right at the surface where the velocity is zero, we have pure conduction, and all of the energy that's leaving the plate and going into the flow is given at that point by Fourier's law. We want to characterize this using a convection coefficient. It's something we can calculate. We, we can determine what the convection coefficient is if we know this temperature gradient, because we can apply Newton's law of cooling and say that same heat flux is a convection coefficient times the known temperature at the surface, minus the ambient temperature t infinity far away from the plate. So we know all of these things. We can calculate this because we know the temperature profile if we, if we know the whole field, and therefore we can clearly determine what h of x is. h is going to vary because this gradient is varying. It'll be a function of x, and it's that local heat flux divided by ts minus t infinity. Now, because that's varying, we would like to have a single convection coefficient to calculate the total heat transfer from our geometry to the flow. Now if we look at any point in this plate, let's say this plate is of a dimension L and x is zero starts at the leading edge of this plate. So what we need is an average convection coefficient. Let's say I want to go to any point x here and say what's the heat transfer over this section of the plate with this varying convection coefficient. Well clearly I need an average convection coefficient that would come about by integrating from zero to x, my chosen location x, of this distribution hx. From that I can use Newton's law of cooling to say that that average, the, the heat, the total heat rate uh, from that portion of the plate to my fluid is that average convection coefficient times the area between the area of the plate up to x times that temperature difference ts minus t infinity. And of course I could do the same thing over the entire plate right up to the length l and get my average coefficient for the whole plate by simply putting x is equal to l and using that average value in Newton's law of cooling. So I hope in this introductory video you can appreciate that the specific form of the fluid flow over a particular surface that we're interested in calculating the heat transfer to or from is going to determine the temperature profiles that we have. From those temperature profiles we can calculate the temperature gradients and we can determine ultimately what a convection coefficient is that we can use in our Newton's law of cooling. That's typically always going to be variable over our surface and so the numbers that we've been using have been some kind of average coefficient uh, over the geometry of interest. Different geometries will give us different conditions and we'll see lots of different geometries while studying convective heat transfer.